Hello and welcome to Project Mosquito. When I set out on this journey to build this car, when I started planning it all, I set out a brief for what I wanted. I wanted wheels that you can't just go out and buy. So, you know, no matter how much money you have, you can't just like go to a shop and pick some up in boxes. And I wanted something that was period correct for the late 60s, early 70s. So basically what I wanted was 50 year old custom wheels, which is obviously a thing that doesn't exist. And yet, here are my 50 year old custom wheels. These are three piece Gotti alloys. The kind of wheels that you will see on a Renault Alpine or a yeah, mid-engine Renault Turbo or even on an IMSA 911 or loads of other stuff throughout the years. They were really run out um, imported into America, so if you're an American, you'll know, know them as Ron Al Gottis, because they were on loads of 911s and stuff like that. Gambala were very fond of them in the 80s. But uh, yeah, these are three piece, incredibly lightweight, 14 by 8 inch alloy wheels. Now, those of you who have seen these before will have seen them as 13 inch BMW wheels. One heck of a wheel. This is another Gotti. This is an earlier Gotti. And this is from a BMW 2002 rally car. So you've seen them as 13 inch BMW wheels. How come they're in front of you as 14 by 8 when they were 13 by 6s? Well, I took the center. It has a center that looks like this. All right. Well, I also managed to find rare as hen's teeth a set of 14 inch custom made Porsche rally alloys that use the same centers of the IMSA racing car. I've still got them upstairs. So I, if I want some uh, four, if I want some 13 by six 911 wheels, <laughs> I've actually got those as well. But it means that these are forged barrels because they're from a Porsche wheel. Now I found those Porsche wheels incorrectly listed for sale online as BMW wheels, but because I'm a giant nerd, I know that Gotti only put a P in front of a wheel code if it was made for a Porsche. So I knew that these would be absolutely perfect because they'd have forged barrels. And these 14 by eight are lighter than the 13 by sixes that the BMW centers originally came on. And because the Porsche wheels were 14 by seven, but the center of a Porsche wheel bolts on the back as most three piece modern wheels do. But the old school BMW 202 wheels fit in the center as a one inch spacer. So we have a five inch back, we have a one inch center and a two inch front making eight inches. Now, why did I go for these over, is it still right way up? Nope. <laughs> why did I go for these over a 13? Well, cause because look at them, they're awesome. Now, I went for these over a 13 because my front MX-5 suspension, I know can fit a 13 inch wheel, but it was designed for a 14. And my rear suspension is a um, CRV, um, uh, CRV Civic and DC5 Integra rear suspension, but the base model Civic comes with 14 inch wheels with a four by 100. Ta-da! And also I tried the 13s on the front and it just so happens that with these wheels in this setup, which I was gonna put on the back, I, I thought about doing a staggered setup for a moment and we're running 13s on the front and 14s on the back because a 14 inch wheel, a bigger wheel on the back turns slower so it makes your car more stable at speed which this will be a tiny, short, little twitchy car as it is. But when I tried these on the front, just, you know, just for laughs, the kingpin inclination angle is absolutely perfect for that MX-5 front suspension. I literally could not have had a custom made set of wheels that are better than these. So I'm a very, very happy boy. And now for the first time, I've only just finished these, by the way, these were a mess. This has been a lot of hard work, thanks to Mariam, my father, and myself. We have spent hundreds of hours <laughs> cleaning and polishing these wheels because these centers were available on a Martini Formula car, a Simca, uh, something called a CG. A CG is like, um, it's like an Alpine, but it uses Simca bits. 
and of course BMW 2 double twos, but they're a rough cast wheel, they're a sand cast wheel like a mini light or like, uh, like this intake manifold. They are not a shiny polished wheel. So we had to wet and dry sand these centers to within an inch of their life and then polish them. And they have big casting lines that run all the way through them because originally these have like, um, have like a leaf motif on the, each spoke, which we got rid of because I wanted them to look a bit like a coffin spoke from a, a Stratos. So it's like a little bit like a, a Ford RS alloy, a little bit like a coffin spoke. It's, a, it's very Japanese looking. You can buy Japanese wheels now, but it look a lot like this. Like, it looks like a lot of wheels, but at the same time, you can't quite place it, which is just perfect. And uh, the barrels were actually, because they were rally wheels, <laughs> they were painted with polyurethane white paint. Now, polyurethane white wheel paint is awesome stuff if you never want the polyurethane white paint to come off. However, if you want to remove the polyurethane white paint to polish the rims, it's an absolute nightmare. And the insides, the, in, the insides had never been painted, so they were all oxidized. They were basically like white and scaly like my gearbox was. So it's been an absolute mission to get these wheels as you see them before you today. And the bolts are 316 stainless steel in an 8.8, .8, and each of one of these aluminium washers has been polished by myself six times by hand because they were also covered in polyurethane paint and were an absolute nightmare. <laughs> but they're now done and I'm happy. Unfortunately, I've only done one wheel, so I've also <laughs> so I've now got three more to do, which that, that's the sad bit. But I've also got tires. Now, the tires that I wanted for these wheels are no longer available. Unfortunately, I bought the wheels, went to order the tires, and because of the um, the thing that's happened in the world that I'm not allowed to talk about, otherwise this video gets demonetized, that thing, the, you know, the spicy cough, the, the spicy cough has prevented tire manufacturers from producing as many tires, and you'll know this if you've been trying to buy tires lately, but tires, well, to call it tire availability is a joke because it's kind of tire unavailability. And so the tires that I wanted for this car aren't available. So dad and I spent a week and a half studying tires and I found some. This, or rather, it's in a jacket. This is my spicy cough solution. This is a Toyo Proxy CF2, which is a fancy touring tire made by Toyo. And you will see it says 18555R14, right? However, Toyo are very sneaky because these aren't 185s. If you actually measure the tread width, they're a 195, which means they'll fit my 18-inch rims with a tiny bit of stretch, which I'm very happy about because I wanted a tiny bit of stretch because it's not a proper rally car. It's not that proper stance if it hasn't got just a little soupçon of stretch. And uh, these will fit absolutely perfectly. And they are a touring tire, which is great news because when we do the setup of this car, I don't want a super grippy tire because that can hide a lot of bad handling characteristics. I don't want something that is, you know, like a Toyo R R that's leech-like or a, a Nankang AR2 or something like that. That's so leech-like it can hide bad handling characteristics until you're going really, really, really fast and then all of a sudden it just lets go. That's not what I want. I want something that lets go really progressively at a reasonable speed, but also something that I can get good mileage out of because a touring tire is what you should have on a Grand Touring Mini. So I'm a very happy bunny today, and for the first time ever, I will see these tires mounted on these wheels, which I have owned now for over a year and been working on and trying to make this beautiful. And that's why you can't just go out and buy them. Because what you have to do is you have to go out, you have to find two incredibly rare sets of wheels and then spend over a year polishing them. Oh, Dad's here as well. 
Say hi. Oh. You're a bugger. Right, I keep calling dad Andrew in these videos. Sorry, no, I keep calling dad dad in these videos because to me he is dad, yellow dot. But dad is actually Andrew, so Andrew. Because everyone in the comments calls you dad and it's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're ever going to fit CF2s and I'll look around, there's either a direction arrow or it should say somewhere outside. Yay! So that goes to the outside of the car. And of course, we have a yellow dot, which we have to line up with our valve. So there's our valve. And we are going to fit these by hand. Unfortunately, we can't balance them by hand. If you move your hand, sturdy boots come in handy. Uh, we need to get it into the rim, don't we? If you've never seen us do this, I've got a video all about it. Where I fit a 2CV tire by hand. 75 years later. Ha! Ha ha! Woohoo! It is a bit of a stretch, but not so much that we're going to have to use fire. It should just inflate with good old fashioned air. Although, you can use fire if you want to lose your eyebrows. <laughs> right, let's pump her up. Another reason why I went for this wheel and tire combo is because the biggest tire you can fit on a Mini is a 17550 on a 13 by 7 inch rim. And I wanted a bigger <laughs> I wanted a bigger tyre than that. So one of the things that hold a lot of the mid-engine minis back is the fact that you can only fit a teeny tiny wheel. And I'm a big fan of Japanese cars and a big fan of Japanese car culture. And a lot of people will know 14-inch wheels who, um, who love Kyusha, which is, or Kyushikai, which means old car in Japan. And it's their way of doing up old cars, things like, you know, Mark 1 Skylines and Kent Mary Skylines and 240Zs and Datsuns and all of that kind of thing. Like 14 inch wheels are a really common wheel size for those cars. And a 185 is actually the, the widest, a 185, um, I think it's a 18513 is the, like the widest you can fit on an A86. And so I wanted something that was very cute. I wanted something that was very true to my roots as far as my personal history with car culture and um i think i've got it because like gotties were huge in japan as well and yeah i'm really really happy but um i wanted the stretch now a little bit of stretch is perfectly fine a lot of stretch can be dangerous but a little bit of stretch can actually be a good thing it's one of the reasons why a lot of old rally cars have a bit of stretch and a lot of, even old Formula 1 cars used to stretch their tyres onto a really wide rim. It gives you really good control over the uh, sidewall rather than the, rather than the sidewall kind of flopping as you go around corners. It keeps quite a sturdy sidewall. So it's a really good way of having a, a, a large sidewall while having a stable sidewall. And you know, you, you've, we've all seen like handling videos of BMWs from the 1970s where the tires are like pulling off the rims or any time I drive my 2CV. <laughs> the perfect compromise in, in many ways. It looks awesome. It's not super crazy wide. I was tempted to go for a 13 inch wheel, like I've said, but I would have had to gone very, very wide and that gives you a, a sausage-shaped contact patch, whereas if you go for a little bit more diameter, it gives you a square or contact patch. But if I'd have gone for a 15-inch wheel, which would have given me loads of tyre choice, it would have looked stupid. In fact, there is a photo on many of my social medias, um, it did well on Instagram, of me putting a 2CV wheel on the back of a, the GTM. And a lot of people thought that was yeah, rather humorous, but it just happens to be that a, a 185, uh, a 18550 
15 is exactly the same diameter as a 2CV tyre. <laughs> so I was, I was checking the diameter because one of the things that I don't like about GTMs is that the, they have two body lines. On the rear, they have the, the body line that runs kind of from the top of the door over the wing and then they have a separate wheel arch. So it's like you've got a wheel arch and then you've got another wheel arch and earlier cars don't have that. But uh, mine does. So what I wanted, because I'm going to have to put big wheels on this thing, is, is a, a wheel that kind of filled that more without looking absurd, even though this thing is going to look like a tiny Hot Wheels car, or rather a big Hot Wheels car. Right, you wanna, you'll want to see it on, let's put it on, because I want to see it on as well. Now you all know that I'm using a Honda Integra DC5 K20 engine, and I'm using Honda Civic EP3 drive shafts, and I'm using Honda CRV rear uprights and suspension arms, and I'm using American imported drag racing hubs. What you might not have figured out is that a base model Civic, or 2207, or whatever it is, is also 4x100. So I can use base model Honda Civic brake discs, hopefully, and also brake calipers, fingers crossed. Hopefully it all works out because the base model Civic also used this rear suspension. Honda factory brake disc on a not factory hub, but with factory Honda suspension and factory Honda shafts just from many different cars. Okay, here's a wheel, Dad. Don't scratch the paint. And I should also mention that um, these aren't the wheel nuts that we're using. These are temporary Toyota Yaris wheel nuts. All the Honda guys just went, no! Because <laughs> <laughs> Yaris Hilton's wheel nuts just happen to fit. So I went to the scrapyard and uh, plundered several Yaris's because they all had three wheels for some reason. Hopefully it's not wheel nut failure. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't buy wheel nuts because we didn't know how much stud would be left once we got the uh, discs. Yay. Right, and the reason for all of this is so that we can do suspension geometry because you have to work out your suspension geometry from the center line of the tire. Oh, I'm a happy boy. I'm gonna stand back and look at it now. These are the original wheels, um, 13 inch. I th original, I thought they were 12 inch because I just wasn't paying attention. I, I hated them so much that they just got put upstairs. I did strip some of the paint off though. But 13 by 155 on, I'm guessing, a six inch rim. <laughs> Slight improvement. And of course, these are heavier than, uh, than those. And as you all know, these wheels had giant wheel spaces on them. And uh, something tells me we won't be needing wheel spaces with these. Now, many of you will be asking why I didn't go for something like a 22513 rather than this 19514. My reasoning for that is one, my double wishbone suspension doesn't allow me to come much further in without risking clearance issues. And with the, uh, with the bottom wishbone, so I would have had to come further out if I wanted to run a right or wider wheel than this. And another thing is that I live in a place with a lot of rain and a lot of seasons and a lot of kind of gravelly, muddy conditions. I didn't want something that would aquaplane really easily. I'd rather have something that kind of lets go gradually rather than has all the grip in the world and then all of a sudden you hit a puddle and it goes whoop because I don't want to go whoop ever. <laughs> And the great thing about 14s is they're also available in a huge array of winter and snow tires. So I can also do that. The other great thing about a 19555 is that I can run it on the front. It is the biggest tire that I can actually run on the front 
and the kingpin inclination angle with these wheels is perfect. But not only that, if I get a puncture ever, I'll be able to take a front tire, or if I drive a really, really long way, I'll be able to drive all the way to Morocco, drive spiritedly in the Atlas Mountains, put a front tire on the back and drive home. Because if I put a space saver spare on one of these back wheels, then the over 250 something horsepower will just obliterate it. And so <clears throat> if I'm in the middle of nowhere, and I get a puncture, it won't be the most convenient thing in the world because I'll have to take a front wheel off and a back wheel, but I'll be able to jack it up, take a front wheel off, put it on the back, put the space saver on the front and then tootle home and not really worry about it that much. And uh, yeah, it's, it's the best compromise basically. And uh, I'm really happy with it. And it looks pretty and it looks retro, which is what I wanted. You can get a bunch of retro tires, but they're also really expensive. Like the ones that come on a Stratos are available in these sizes, unfortunately, they're also 500 euros each. And uh, no. I'm sure you don't like to see it with the body on now and the sills on, and so would I. But unfortunately, they no longer fit because we've welded these tubes in here. So that will have to wait for a future episode, which I'm super excited about because I can't wait to see this thing all together. I'm, I'm like chomping at the bit and I can't wait to get stuck into all that lovely geometry. So if you are excited about this build and as excited as I am, make sure you head down there, make sure you click subscribe, click like, click the bell icon. That way you get notified of future episodes and tell me what you think of the wheels down below. I know four spokes are quite controversial. A lot of people don't like four spokes. I'm kind of on the fence. Some I love, some I don't love. Um, I don't love revolutions. And way back when, when I was first figuring out wheels for this build, I asked people what wheels they thought I should buy for this car. And like 80% of people said revolutions and I hate them. Dad loves them. And uh, so hopefully this is kind of a, a happy medium. But uh, I wanted a coffin spoke. I wanted something that was kind of retro, but didn't look like a pastiche of something else. This is not a replica. It's not a replica of another car. This is its own thing, and so I wanted something that felt like its own thing, but also felt like the time in which it came from. And uh, I think that this does it very well, while still being very European, and uh, having a slight nod to the Japanese, because I know we've got some Japanese viewers now. Hello, Japanese viewers. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Please be awesome to each other, and uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.